take three on this intro, and hopefully it's the last one. So I was listening to J Electronica's Exhibit A, one of the all-time great tracks, and I mean, let's face it, it's a little bit dated at this point, but the lyrics are still some of the greatest words spit it in the past decade of uh, hip hop and maybe just in general period. Uh, and when you look at some of the, the the bars that you get from that particular song, it just feels like it came from a whole different universe. And more than that, we go to Exhibit C, a sequel to Exhibit A that came out in the 2000s uh, and 10s, which is the decade I want to talk about today. And we have let's look let's listen to, let's look at some of these references we get uh, in Exhibit C, 2011. Okay, this never stopped recording. All right, anyway, I'm back in it. Uh, <laughs> so the song I was looking for was not Exhibit C. It was um, the game's higher remix. Um, a song off of that didn't make it onto its um, 2011, I believe 2011, 2010 album, uh, the Red album. Uh, and it featured Jay Electronica. And here's the verse I wanted to, to, to talk about. So, here's the lyrics. We rock every crowd, you get trampled and booed. It's the Phantom of the Chakra, Slumdog Opera, Rap Radar, Nar Right, OK Player, Mosh Up. So, we we look, if you don't know what those three, so Rap Radar, Nar Right, OK Player were some of the most popular music blogs of the previous, well, late previous decade, early 2010s, uh, along with um, um, Hype Beast and uh, a couple of other different ones that I can't think about right now, but uh, Complex, I guess, technically as well. And when you think about it, hip-hop, online hip-hop to a certain degree, has kind of lost its soul since we've gone away from blogs, um, if you if you ask me. If you ask me. That's just what I'm saying. So in, in that spirit, I have five takes, hipster takes, uh, that came from the top of my head that I would hope that the people could appreciate and maybe relate to it to a certain degree. So starting with one of the biggest uh, facets of the hip-hop community in the early part of this decade that I didn't mention earlier, um, Genius, formerly known as Rap Genius. Uh, the first time I used Rap Genius uh, actively was around 2011 in uh, seventh grade. Um, I love looking up like lyrics. I started getting hip-hop deep. And looking up lyrics, I actually know like what the hell I'm listening to. It's very important. I have like very weird ears where I can hear something, but like I don't really know what's being said sometimes, especially when it comes to, like lyrical hip hop. And that's what I, I, as most people do, that's what I really got into when I started listening to music was lyrical hip hop. Um, you know, Earl was big at that time. Uh, Nas, uh, Tyler, Lupe. Um, well, not Tyler, I guess, but Lupe. Um, a little bit other, I rock him with some of the people I listen to. Uh, and the point being is that when Genius was a form, uh, I don't believe it's a form anymore. I'm not, I'm not sure if it has the community tab that I'm looking at right now, but I don't believe it's a form in the sense that it's actually like Kanye Tother or something of that, uh, Niche Boston. I it, it felt like it was a real like hip hop community, like an actual community, it felt like a real hip hop. People just cared about hip hop. You honestly couldn't go if there's a relevant artist. You almost couldn't go without seeing someone trying to connotate uh, those lyrics to the best of their ability. And I feel like lyrics were more accurate because they had people that actually cared about hip hop on there. And you had artists on Genius, not cornballs like Lil Tecca or fucking uh, whoever they else that got out here these days, narrating their stupid like one line songs and just repeated hooks. It was like actually artists given their actual takes on these deeper songs may not sound more like a boomer than a hipster here, but like you like let's say you go on to the, here's one of the the best feelings that people of the next decade won't know so let's say you go on to um an earl song and uh let's say it's it's looper and you see in the you see you go over to the right and you see who annotated who was the contributor who annotated it? Some random herb with a uh, one of those shining uh, kitty cat wolf gang gifs as his avatar. And the third person you see with a score of like 20 or 25, you see like Haji Beats or you see Damo Genesis annotating the song, giving their take on the lyric. 
and you see it, in the, it's, it'll be green because it's a, it's a special artist who annotates it. That's one of the best films you see, like an artist give his take on his friend or his own music, and it's just deeper. It's just cool. Um, now you go to Genius. A, it's not just rap. It's like poetry and all this other nonsense that I don't even think held up very well for him, but... Sorry, I'm a little bit sick. Uh, people, I guess people still use it, I guess. Um, and Genius, I mean, it's obvious. If you've seen Genius on Instagram and their videos, their, you know, it's like the boom, like fire, boom, and then like it goes over like lyrics and it's like, like it's like a mind-blowing emoji and it's like some corny, like off-handed, off-beat, uh, poorly written bars that aren't interesting at all. Like, that's that's genius content now and it's despicable um number two take hip-hop was better when it was weird in the early 2010s i feel like this is maybe not the, the most blazing take of all time but when you look at hip-hop now i mean it's so plastered i mean you think about it's tiktok is a very big facet in the hip-hop um you think about it in the 2010s, they had social media like MySpace, uh, Twitter, uh, Vine later on. Those were big parts of hip-hop. YouTube, big parts of hip-hop. They weren't, you didn't make music that sounded like it was directly for those platforms. Like, you look at some, like, you look at that Ransom song by Lil Tecca. Or you think about, um, like, Juju on that beat. That is a, like, you, you know how you like, straight to DVD Disney movies. You have straight to TV movies. That's like a straight to TikTok song. Juju on that beat shouldn't be a song that succeeds outside of TikTok. And that's a lot of songs these days are of that same. Oh, there's a lot of TikTok made songs or a lot of just plastered bubblegum trap. I just feel like it's so formulaic in hip hop now as far as the mainstream. Back then, I feel like the mainstream, like, but you really think about it. People say Tyler in 2011's Underground, um, or Odd Future's Underground. 2011, I don't believe so. Maybe 2010. 2012, definitely. Like, you think about 20, 2012, some of the most successful online artists were weird as hell. Like, you think about Cray Sean. You can't even find, who, who the, how are you going to find a Cray Sean in 2019? They'll cancel her before she even gets big. Or, uh, Lil Debbie. Or Tyler, or Hobson, or um, or somebody like that. I mean, Funk Volume, Funk Volume couldn't even exist in 2019. Like that whole genre of fans are like back doing like rock and grunge and all that jazz. They're out, out of hip hop pretty much. Like they don't even like listen to hip hop anymore. Um, I mean, you just think about like weird artists in the early. I mean, you could you could go deeper too. I mean, you think about Gambino or you know, eventually Chance, or people like that, like, artists that are now a little bit more past their artistic, you know, peak. I It's just so weird. I mean, and these are people coming off of, you know, 808s and Heartbreak, you know, Graduation, um, Kid Cudi, uh, you know, Follow Up, I mean, Travis Scott, obviously, he got his start in 2011. No Name, um, I believe it was there, um, Kilo Kish, I guess to some degree, it was just so weird. And I think that really made it so diverse. Like every this is when like regions started going away because everybody's making their own music. I think regions all started regions also started going away because everybody started making the same plaster trout music no matter where you were at as well. That also was a factor. You know, so I mean it's it, I don't I don't see much creativity in some of these guys these days. Number three, forums and blogs are still better than social media for music. Um, I mentioned a couple of uh, forums and blogs earlier. Rap Radar, um, you know, OK, I forgot, but OK Player, and then um, Nah, right? Like you had a lot of Gorilla versus Bear. You had a couple of um, uh, God, I'm trying. Pitchfork it was a, a Pitchfork was massive in the early 2000s. I don't know who still uses Pitchfork like religiously like that. I think Pitchfork, Metacritic, Rate Your Music, um, these options, Hip Hop DX. Like these reviewing um, venue vendors were so much better because like they couldn't just do this. They they couldn't get big just because they had like shock reviews. Like when they gave Gambino like a one point six on Camp, 
That's because that, they genuinely thought that about Gambino. Gambino wasn't big that like that. I mean, he was big. I guess bigger. Like I mean, he was. He had a he had community. You know, stuff like that. Um, but he wasn't like like be, like giving somebody a messed up review like Fantano does. You know, these days. Um, that doesn't that didn't make you big back then. So like you were making these reviews, you were curating this music because you genuinely thought this was good music, and that's how you got big was by just being the best blog. I mean, you just made the best reviews. You didn't do it because someone paid you off or this and that and that and this. So I mean, that's just some two dope boys. I forgot two dope boys. Two dope boys was dickheads, and from what Tyler, I'm listening to Tyler right now. When I say this, they definitely bigged up the biggest artist. Um, in the California scene, like a Dom Kennedy, as he would name drop and other people like that, versus the most more low key guys, but they became better. Um, you got pitches and play up, uh, pitches and playing still active. Hype Beast isn't really like a they're like a I guess a culture now. Um, you think about them, but I mean outside of that, it's like everybody can make an Instagram, you know. I'm a critic, basically. I'm a critic. Um, he's a critic. She can be a critic. Anybody can be a YouTube. The barrier to entry is so low. And I believe that's why, like, a lot of people's curation game is, like, down. Like, I think there's so much music out there. People just find their niche. What we're viewing, they don't try to make, like... They don't try to open it up to, like, different sounds in hip-hop. Just, like, if I can find this niche, I want to run after that. Like, Big Quint... He does, now he only does, I mean, he's a busy guy. I mean, he's a little bit older now. He's a busy guy. He only does, like, the biggest releases. And guys that, I guess, kind of, like, associated with his brand in the past. Um, so, I mean, like, it's just a lot of, I'm not using him as an example to talk about some of the newer acts. But, like, if you go to Instagram and you see, like, a hip-hop page, if they, if they like, let's say, I know one in particular. They only do, like, pretty much, like, Jid sounding things, J. Cole sounding things, that kind of, I guess, lame hip-hop people call it, like, lame hip-hop, basically. Or you gotta have somebody that only does, like, like, um, like, very feminine sounding, like, you know, Tyler the Creator Igor type of, you know, Urban Outfitters hip-hop. Like, some people only do that. So it's very weird, you know, some people only do, like, Cash Cardi, uh, Thousand Band Fountain, um, that type of hip-hop. A lucky type of hip hop. So I mean, you got like niches. You don't have like transcending, trying to get every sound in there and give your taste on everything. And not everybody can talk about everything. Like some people couldn't talk about Action Bronson back in the day without being like, okay, it's just a fat Ghostface killer clone. Some people couldn't do that. I mean, like, some people couldn't talk about Riff Raff without like laughing him off. You know, some people couldn't take multiple sounds and give them an unbiased opinion without judging them before looking at it. That's perfectly fine, but you have to at least make the attempt, I feel like. Um, and taking that to number five, um, I want to do this last, but I'm, it kind of parlays. Everybody trying to be a genre bender isn't it. All right, brief intermission. You may be wondering why I'm naked. Uh, well, not naked, but from the top down, uh, exposed. And I think it's a fair question to ask um because the previous clip i wasn't i'm in a different area I, I actually last recorded a video like a week ago a week and a half ago so i'm lazy uh, i didn't get it done obviously but here we go number five and the most important part genre bending needs to be dead unless you're really good at it let me tell you right now tyler the creator i don't have any examples pulled. i'm just going to talk about it tyler the creator igor that was all right, John. I see me trying to do jazz influence, uh, that you know, dream pop wave. Well, not dream pop, but kind of like blissful pop wave. That I think the, <laughs> to be honest with you, the Claro, the Kyle Uchis, the Urban Outfitters, the Forever Twenty One, that sound, Rest of Orange County. He, I feel like he did a little bit less with this album than he did with a uh, twenty seventeen album. He definitely tried to bring in some more. Um, kind of uplifting kind of pop R&B sounds from like older decades and if you watch this Beats 1 interview with um old dude from uh, BBC Pause uh, it kind of speaks to his influences and how he executed some of them uh, in production Um, but at the same time it's like 
okay, it's genre bending hip hop, but it's not hip. It feels the hip hop aspect. So why are we calling it hip hop? Like as far as rap goes, he doesn't rap on the album. So it's like I mean, some of the best moments on the album kind of involve him rapping, but like. For the most part, the album isn't even like a real rap album. I mean, I'm not saying he intended it to be a rap album. I'm just saying that it doesn't do good at the rocking aspect. So it's not genre bending hip hop, which a lot of people have to put it as to, you know, really big up its worth to the hip hop community. Um, and going along with that, you know, Drake, I think Drake has done a good job of. And it's, it's, his own, it's in his own game, of course, but he is essentially bigging up other genres to audiences that normally wouldn't seem like dance hall a lot of people want to find out about dance hall if it was for drake uh bounce music a lot of people want to find out about bounce if it was for drake um and you know some of the low-key soundcloud type of guys like mcconan and um a couple other people he tried to put on i think he tried to put on trippy that didn't work out obviously <laughs> yeah i'm glad it didn't work out for trippy dude i hate trippy so much um but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, he's put on artists and he's dissimilated their sound to his music. Um, that 2014 song with, uh, was it Sauce Walker or is it, I'm thinking about the one with, uh, with, uh, Fetty Wap, Fetty Wap, yeah. Uh, he also tried to put Sauce Walker on too, I think, but that Fetty Wap song, it's just sounds that, like, are good and it's good they're being heard, but, like, he himself may not be doing the best justice with this gentrification kind of I don't want to use the term whitewashing sound like an SJW but like it's kind of whitewashing. I mean it really is. It's like Aubrey washing, a uh, new genre of, of white of washing uh, of gentrification. And it's 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 not doing the music justice. And everybody tries to be a genre bender. Everybody tries to be Gambino or tries to be Tyler or, you know, who Kanye. Like not everybody can make a eight oh eight. Not everybody can make Jesus, not everybody can make um, me and your mother like that's not me and me and your mom. No, might not everybody can make that song or that album. And it's like, why do we keep on like we keep on trying to like Essence Sensation? This is my last point with this, but this point, and it's because I do love Essence Sensation. I loved his music. I loved his personality. I loved what he brought to music in large. Um, he was talented enough to do genre bending. But he let John Rabinian be his only goal in music. Like his, at least at least for the music that we got. Maybe down the road, obviously some of the Bad Vibes Forever would have been more of a traditional hip-hop project. For the most part, some of the finished concepts seem to be more hip-hop based. But Question Mark and um, and uh, Seventeen had this, like, this weird like bevy of like trying to, different things that's trying to implement and show. But like at the same time, not like a finished concept and that was essentially also the goal of revenge and it's like he always wanted to show all the talents he could do but he never wanted to hone any of them it's kind of like a jack of all trades thing and i just don't think that jack of all trades wave is what he should come out the gate with i think he should have tried maybe sprinkling that in with a couple features maybe a couple tracks but that was his whole prerogative out the gate was all right let me show him i can show i can let me show him i can do everything and then come back and hit him with the hip hop later on in life. And maybe my only sense because we never got to see the hip hop in its truest sense because he died before we got to finish before we got to finish that era of his music. But uh it really is sad because uh obviously we lost a a true hip hop talent. A guy that could really could rap his butt off and we never got to see that rap project. But it's sad to say that uh along with all the other points that a lot of things in the twenty tens, um especially the early 2010s uh definitely will be missed into 2020s a lot of a lot of cultural influences that uh would have been nice to have because of how well played out music is right now uh that's just my opinion especially hip-hop definitely needs to restart button uh under shout out to underground shout out to slums shout out to griselda uh, shout out to you know that general sound of music uh people still band cap uh band camp JPEG Mafia, uh, whoever else I'm missing on, Earl, Earl obviously is holding it down, um, shout out Roddy Rich, uh, I guess shout out Roddy Rich, uh, shout out Lancey Falls, shout out the UK music, UK rap is really coming up, and I don't mean that to be an ass, shout out to AJ Tracy, 
Um, shout out to shout out to Giggs. Uh, Giggs is a new out here, but shout out to Giggs. Anyway, that's all I got to say. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it wasn't too jarring. Sorry for the shirtless uh, little peek here. But uh, hey, you gotta let the girls know, hey.